You know, one thing we all have in common is that we all love our creature comforts. You know, our toys, as we like to call them. We have adult toys and we have all types of things that we possess from cars to clothing to kids to capital, you name it. We have so many things as Americans. There's nothing wrong with us having things, but what is wrong is when our things have us. But how do you juggle it? How do you know how to properly assess all the things you have to keep them from becoming more important than life and even God himself? Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to have a proper assessment of things. We're going to look at the third chapter of the book of Philippians. This is Bishop Littman Live. In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. Welcome to another episode of Bishop Lipman Live. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Bishop Lipman Live family. I'm so excited to have you as a part of us. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, or wherever you may be watching this. Hey, welcome back to all of our Bishop Lipman Live family members. Thank you for being here. Everyone, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It's always a joy to bring these teachings and this time of prayer and meditation to you. So things, let's talk about it. We all have things and we all enjoy our things, don't we? Of course we do. You bet we do. But what is the proper mindset that we should have concerning the things that we have? Well, in this third chapter of the book of Philippians, Paul actually addresses this subject with the church at Philippi. He says to us in Philippians chapter three, verse number four, in the Living Bible translation, yet if anyone ever had a reason to hope that he could save himself, it would be I. If others could be saved by what they are, certainly I could. Verse five, your attitude should be the kind that was shown us by Jesus Christ, who though he was God, did not determine and demand and cling to his rights as God. Paul says to us in this fourth verse through this sixth verse, he literally gives us his accolades. He says to us, if anyone had a cause or reason to brag or to even save himself by the works that he has performed, I indeed am that guy. Because watch what he says. Verse five now, for I went through the Jewish initiation ceremony when I was eight days old, having been born into a pure-blooded, Jewish home that was a branch of the old original Benjamin family. Paul comes from the creme de la creme, the top family among the Jews. So I was a real Jew if there ever was one. What's more, I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to every Jewish law and custom. And sincere Yes, so much so that I greatly persecuted the church and I tried to obey every Jewish rule and regulation right down to the very last point. Now, in verse number four through six, we see Paul's accolades, Paul's accolades. Paul just gave us a rundown of his family tree. His Jewish history is pristine. He comes from the top of the line the top echelon of the Jewish family. And that for him would create some serious bragging rights among those preachers. Remember those dogs from last time at the top of chapter three of Philippians, Paul is advising the church, avoid those dogs who only say that you can only be saved by way of circumcision. Now, Paul could talk this kind of talk because he was, in fact, circumcised on the eighth day of his life. He gives us his accolades in the first couple of verses. But now let's move to verse number seven and verse number eight, and we'll see Paul's assessment of his accolades. Verse seven of Philippians chapter three. Living Bible reads like this, but all these things that I once thought were very worthwhile, now I have thrown them all away so that I can put my trust and hope in Christ alone. 
Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I have put aside all else, counting it worthless than nothing in order that I can have Christ. Paul's assessment of his accolades is in verse 7 and 8 of Philippians chapter 3. And in verse 7 and 8, Paul says, all of those things that I just got through telling you that make me a distinguished gentleman in the Jewish faith and culture, I count it all as less than nothing. Wow. Paul said, I put all of that aside that I might be counted worthless and in order that I might have Christ. As we think about all of our accolades, so many times it's so easy to get caught up in the things that we've done or the material possessions we have accumulated and all of that. But listen, Paul says your assessment of all of your accolades are worth less than nothing compared to knowing Jesus Christ. It's great to have things. It's great to have creature comforts and toys and all of those things. But Paul says you have to properly assess it all and count it all worthless next to knowing Jesus Christ. And this is Paul's assessment now in verse 7 and verse 8. Paul continues on with his assessment by telling us that all of it is worth nothing except that I know Jesus Christ. We have to come to a point in our own lives where we don't boast and brag on the things that we've done, the things that we have, where we went to school, how much money we think we have in the bank, what our beacon score may be, and all of these kinds of things. Because without Christ in our lives, it is absolutely worthless. And so Paul teaches us two things in these particular verses. Here's number one, and it comes from verse seven. Our identity in Christ and not our credentials. Our identity in Christ and not our credentials is what makes us who we are. You see, Paul assesses his identity in Jesus Christ as a child of God, as a son of God, as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, as far more paramount to any of his accolades and accomplishments and achievements. And it is our identity in Christ that makes us who we are, not our identity in a social club and a fraternity and a sorority and a civic organization, not our money in the bank, not our clout, not our political position, not our possessions, not the home, not the subdivision that we may live in, not the name brand on our car or on our clothes, but it is merely our identity in Jesus Christ that makes us who we are, what we are, and brought us to where we are. The second lesson Paul teaches us is this. Our association with Christ is priceless, but catch this, our accumulation of things is worthless. Oh, that's good. Our, our association with Christ is priceless. Our accumulation of things is worthless. Wow, if we could really grasp these powerful lessons and understand that we are who we are, we are where we are only because of our identity with Christ. That is that Jesus represents us before God. Jesus makes it possible for us to have heavenly an eternal existence with God the Father in heaven. And it's only and all because of the Lord Jesus Christ. But secondly, this other second main point today is that our association with Christ is priceless. You can't put a price tag on the blood of Jesus and on the cross and on the crucifixion that he endured and suffered and the pain and agony that he went through just to make us right with God. And so Paul says to us, ladies and gentlemen, our association with Christ is priceless, but our accumulation of things is worthless. Things wane in value. Things decrease in significance. You buy a new iPhone today, it won't be long before it is obsolete. And then you got to go buy another one just to keep up. But the blood of Jesus never loses its value, its power, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood still gives us strength from day to day. And it never loses its, its power. It never loses its value. 
and our association with Christ is priceless. Our accumulation of things is worthless. Mm. So thank God for the blood. Thank God for our association and our affiliation with Jesus Christ. And this is what Paul teaches us in verse four through verse eight of Philippians chapter number three about the proper assessment of things. Hey, I would love to share more studies with you. If you're interested, I would love to share free PDF study guides with you. Simply send me an email and you can just type in the word request or add me or anything like that. And the email address is clearstudies at gmail.com. If you have a prayer need, I'd love to share in prayer with you. Simply send me an email to prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. Again, the E-class email address again is clearstudies at gmail.com. Clearstudies at gmail.com. And again, the prayer request email address is prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. I would love to have you to go and visit my website. There you will find insightful Christian blogs. You will find podcasts. You will find links to YouTube channels and my books and so many other three free resources that are available for your usage. Go there right now, bishoplitman.com. O-R-G. I want to pray with you before we end our broadcast today. Lord, thank you for helping us to have a proper association with things. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us that only our association with you is critical and valuable. Our accumulation of things is worthless. Thank you that we can identify with you because we are born again through our belief in the death, burial, resurrection, kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we confess you as our Lord and Savior. Because of you, we are free. We are born again. We are on the road to a right path with God. We are free from our sins. And one day you'll come back to receive us unto yourself. But God, until then, never let us put the blessing before the blesser. Never let us put the possession before the one who possesses our soul. Help us, O oh God, to stay humble. We're grateful for the things you've given to us, but help us to always have a proper assessment of things and never put the thing before the king. And God, forgive us for every time that we may have strayed in that area. Forgive us for our boastful, braggadocious spirits. Forgive us for making life all about us and our toys. Help us, God to make sure that you're always first and foremost in our lives above and beyond anything that we can buy and get a receipt for your blood is priceless. And we thank you for loving us and saving us, setting us free. And we give you all the praise, all the glory and all the honor in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Bishop Lipman live. I want you to make sure that you're commenting, like, share, subscribe. And I'm so happy to bring these teachings to you. I look forward to sharing with you in the very next episode. Until then, we'll talk later.